What's up guys? You haven't seen me in the last couple of days. I kept meaning to film a review for a book that I read last week and then I just kept forgetting to do it. Uh, stuff kept getting in the way. Uh, so here's a book that I read last week. Cain, New Eden. This is written and drawn by Paul Grist. I believe that's how you say it. Yep, Paul Grist, who I think I may have talked about him a little bit when I did one of my uh, uh, collection videos where I showed some of the indie books, the creator own stuff. I think I talked about him a little bit. He is the guy who did uh, Jack Staff and I have a few of those books and I bought this because I really liked his work in Jack Staff. Uh, I'm not sure how I think about what I think about this book. I read it and I am very on the fence on this. Like I'm the most on the fence that I've ever been on anything. On the one hand, if you have read say Batman Year One and The Dark Knight Returns, then there's really not a whole lot of new stuff going on here. This is uh, specifically, I would say, Batman Year One, where you're following Jim Gordon, and I've said before, that is the most uh, Jim Gordon story out there. Like, that's the, the one story that focuses on Jim Gordon the most, even more so than Batman. And, you know, that story is about Jim Gordon uh, trying to, uh, not really trying to rise in the ranks, but he's mostly just trying to get by. Uh, he has a job to do, and his co-workers are all super corrupt and they are trying to make his job harder. So far that spoiler for Batman Year One, they even go and attack him. And this story feels very much like that. You've got Kane who is one of the only honest cops in this story it seems like. Or at the very least, he is one of the only uh, uh, competent cops. Uh, now there's him and there's his partner. I don't remember her name. Um, and then I guess her, I don't know if it's her dad or like her uncle or her grandpa, but somebody I believe is related to her is the captain of the force. And those three are the only really good cops that we see. Uh, Gr uh, Kane, the, the guy right here on the cover, his former partner was corrupt. He was involved in something. We don't know what it was from this. And, uh, spoiler, uh, Kane shot the guy. And, uh, most of the people on the force really like that guy and I'm not entirely sure if they were aware that that guy was corrupt but they definitely do not like Kane for shooting that guy and so now Kane has a new partner that he has to deal with and um, I would say on the one hand like I said I'm very on the fence about this book on the one hand what I don't like about it is that if you have read any uh, police story where a policeman is just fighting against the corruption. If you've seen the movie Serpico or if you've ba if you've read Batman Year One, this is going to feel like it, everything that's just been there done that. But on the other hand, I really enjoyed this story. Uh, specifically, I enjoyed it when it went to the really silly places. Uh, it didn't do it often, and I guess I should go ahead and say this collects the first four issues of the Kane series. I don't know when this series started, but on Amazon I think there was like six volumes. So it went for a little while, and this is only the first four issues. But there is a character in this book who, he was a street performer, that's what we were told, and he attacks somebody uh, because he is dressed up like a rabbit. And he's a street performer, and somebody calls him Bugs Bunny, and that just sets him off. And so he, is, he attacks this person, and then he's arrested. And I'm not even kidding, that guy is like a recurring character in this series. I was looking up to see how many volumes this series lasted, and he is smack dab on the cover of volume two of this series. And as much as I was just kind of ho-hum on this book, that alone really makes me want to buy volume two. I'm not sure if I will, but I really want to see just the ongoing adventures of this psychotic guy dressed up in a rabbit costume. And that is kind of a running plot throughout this book. It doesn't take up a lot of the book because most of the book is this bomb threat that's going on throughout the entire city. But every time the rabbit story comes up, I was laughing myself silly. It's really funny, and it was my favorite part of the book. Um, like I said, I'm very on the fence about this. Uh, one thing I did not like, I just straight up did not like, this book will be in the present day and then it will do a flashback, but it doesn't actually do anything to indicate, hey, a flashback is going on right now. And you could be saying, well, that's just Grist uh, proving, or he just, he thinks that the audience is smart enough to keep up and he doesn't want to spell things out for them. Maybe, but this is one of those cases where I think that spelling it out for the audience a little bit would be a good idea because it's not like these characters look significantly different in their flashbacks that, than they do in the present day. You know, you go and watch Lost, and any given episode is going to have 
moments on the island and then moments off of the island, either flashbacks or flash forwards or flash sideways or whatever. And it's very easy to tell when you are seeing something that's on the island and when you are not because the people on the island, their clothes are torn, their clothes are dirty. Uh, you can see trees, you can see sand. When they're not on the island, you can see buildings, you can see other people, you can see characters who are not on the island. It was very easy to tell when it was switching to a flashback. Here, it's not because they're still in the same city. It still involves the same characters. And you might have a page where it's set in the present day. And then you turn the page and it's set six hours earlier. And it's really hard for me to keep up with this story because it's doing that. And that's really my biggest concern here. And I get the feeling that Grist was just trying to do something new. Just trying to kind of experiment with the art form a little bit. And I would say... It's okay to experiment with the art form, but sometimes it's also okay to say, you know what, comic books have been being made for the last 50 years, and all the people who have been working on comics for the last 50 years, I think they know what they're doing. Maybe instead of trying to do something new that is going to be very confusing for people, maybe instead of doing that, I'll just kind of follow the path that all these people have trailblazed before me. Uh, so yeah, the flashback thing was really just kind of off-putting, and also... If you're really not into uh, police procedural stories like NCIS or CSI or Law & Order or any of those shows, I don't watch any of those shows, so I don't really know the difference between them, but if you're not into that thing, you're probably not going to want to read this because this is basically that. And the humorous parts, like the parts with the rabbit, uh, that doesn't happen nearly often enough. Uh, if you are wanting to read it for something just really silly and off the wall, like this guy dressed up in a rabbit costume and then kidnapping the mayor, that doesn't happen enough. Now, maybe it happens in Volume 2 uh, much more significantly. I don't really know. But if you were listening to this video and you heard me talk about that and you said, that sounds really funny, I want to go read that book, Bear in mind, it is less than a fourth of this book that that is happening. Um, like I said, I'm still not sure how I feel about this. I'm going to tentatively say that if you are really interested in, like, a, a good cop in a world full of bad cops, then go ahead and pick this up. But for me, I like the art. I really, actually, I love the art. I really love Gris' artwork. I would go, I would go so far as to say he's a better artist than he is a writer. I really don't think he's that good of a writer based on the four or so volumes of Jack Staff that I read and based on this volume, I don't think he's that good at writing, but he's an excellent artist. And, you know, even though I didn't like his experimenting with the art form here with the flashbacks and all that, at least he is willing to experiment with the art form. So that is something that I will give him even if I did not necessarily care for the way that he did it. Uh, so that's one of those things I'm still... Even right now, I'm very uh, on the fence about whether I should recommend this or not. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, if you're into this sort of thing, if you're into cop stories, go ahead and pick this up. This is probably something you've never heard of before. You're really going to love the art, I think, and maybe you'll even like the story more than I did. But for me, this is something I'm probably not going to buy the future volumes. Even volume two, where the guy in the rabbit costume comes back, I don't see myself paying cover price or even less than cover price for a story where... You know, even if I really like the rabbit part in this, I'm just not sure if I'm going to pay money for more stuff that I'm going to be very on the fence about, even with some of it being stuff that I really enjoyed. So that's all I have to say about Kane, New Eden. Uh, I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. I hope that you have made your decision if you're going to buy this book based on this video, whether you are or are not going to buy it. I don't know. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back tomorrow with a different kind of review. So I will see you guys later. Have a great day.